say organize, what we're really talking about is just talking with the people that you work with, right? So um, a union is made up of workers. It's not made up of scary people pulling the strings behind the scenes. Um, and if you're already talking to your coworkers about that annoying thing that your boss did, or uh, you know how you didn't get a raise last year, or how your bonus was lower last year, you're sort of already doing the work of unionizing, right? You're already doing that organizing work. Um, so the idea of a union, I think, is often frightening to people when what we're really talking about is a culture of organizing where we, we look out for each other in the workplace, and that's sort of what a group like UCW does. My name is Grace Ranke. I'm an assistant professor here on the UNO campus in the Department of Political Science, and I joined United Campus Workers shortly after joining the campus in 2022. Um, and I now, as in addition to being a dues-paying member, I'm a member of the organizing committee. United Campus Workers um, is a part of the Communication Workers of America Union, um, so it's part of a much bigger organized labor movement. Um, and United Campus Workers has chapters at universities like this one all across the country. Um, and we're what you call a wall-to-wall -wall union. So we're not just organizing faculty, we're not just organizing staff, we're not just organizing students. We're all sort of in the same big union pot through UCW. Um, so UCW UCW Louisiana is one chapter of that big movement um, and we hope to build power not just at this campus but at campuses um, at LSU where there is already an active chapter of UCW. Um, so we envision this movement of all academic workers, people who make places like UNO work, um, we envision all of those workers coming together to build power, um, to improve working conditions, and um, really sort of take control of how choices are made on campus. It's not always uh, transparent uh, how decisions get made on campuses like UNO and LSU. My name is Julia Clark, and I am a member of the United Campus Workers. I serve on the organizing committee at UNO, and I also serve on the statewide steering committee. We're building our collective power so that we can share our voice with the administration and impact how things are done on campus. Uh, we want fair wages, we want better working conditions, we want more transparency, especially when it comes to the budgeting process. We want accountability. Uh, and yeah, we want to have some bottom-up power where, where everybody, no matter of their status or job position, is able to help the university function better. So yes, every member of the union pays dues, uh, and it's based on a sliding scale. So graduate assistants uh, pay the lowest fees, and then it's a sliding scale based off of your income. So the interesting thing about dues is that they're tiered, right? So I am a tenure track faculty member. That generally means that I make more than a graduate student worker, for example. So I pay more in monthly dues than someone who's a grad worker or someone who's an adjunct or working part-time. So those tiers allow us to pool our funds um, in a way that's pretty typical for, for organized labor. It can be really isolating um, to 
sort of work in a place where it feels like the bosses don't have your best interests at heart. Um, and so I met a lot of people who felt that way when I came to UNO. And at some points I felt that way at UNO and UCW quickly became this place where we could all come together and not just sort of air our grievances, but maybe actually do something about it. I, I love the research that I do, I love the people that I work with, but at the time we were actually dealing with a issue of moldy ceiling tiles because of a leak. And so we talked a lot about how the, the working conditions on campus could be a lot better. And you know, the, the buildings seem to be falling apart. So that was kind of the first issue that got me involved with the union. So for a while, a uh, part of my office had uh, plastic sheets, almost like plastic curtains around certain parts of the office. Uh, I, I want to say that lasted for a couple of weeks. I am still fearful that there are moldy ceiling tiles that, that weren't uncovered. Uh, nobody came into my office. I don't know about any mold testing that has occurred since. So. I'm still hesitant to go into my office. Uh, there are still leaks in other parts of the building. So I can't say that it has been remedied, but it's something that the union is still working to, um, to gather opinions about, to hear more people's experiences about, because uh, this issue isn't unique to Milnerberg Hall. Uh, if you come to UNO's campus, you'll likely find a number of issues. I understand your hesitation because I was hesitant too. Uh, the more I've learned, the happier I am with being in the union. Uh, there, there's nothing to be scared of. You shouldn't be scared to share and use your voice. And if you are, that's an indicator that something's wrong. Yeah, um, I would say, well, first of all, I grew up in a right to work state, so-called. Um, I grew up in Georgia. Neither one of my parents were part of unions. Um, I sort of became interested in organized later later in my life, in my academic life. Um, so I really get the hesitancy. I think we're sort of, um, it's the, the air that we breathe in terms of being um, in the Southeast um, in the past couple of decades with these right to work laws. Um, I think what's important to remember is that it is not illegal to organize your workplace, um, no matter if you live in a right to work state or not. So right now we are starting to build regional power and we're starting to play with that idea and imagine what it could look like if we had a voice beyond, you know, beyond the university level, beyond the state level, going all the way up to the federal level. And if, if we can, you know, change some institutional problems that are suffocating resources to, uh, to higher education institutions. So I hope that we are able to organize on a regional level and have, have a voice nationwide eventually. Um, yeah, and just continue to grow membership uh, and to continue to dismantle fears and ideas that that unionizing is only about greed or only about you know uh, sticking it to the man like it's it's much beyond that so I hope that we can continue to you know educate people I want to continue to learn about what unionizing means and yeah I just I'm excited for the workers movement that's going on in the country right now and I think that we're, we're making significant progress. 
I think for UCW on the UNO campus specifically, I hope that some real shared governance could come about from our union growing in membership and then really wielding our power, right? Um, and so some sort of uh, really more control over our, our working conditions, things like salary compression or um, unequal wages or no cost of living increases, right? These are issues that people talk about a lot on campus and my hope is that um, through our union's power we can eventually, um, you know, organize around those goals and uh, move, move in that direction. Um, more broadly, I hope that Louisiana um, becomes a union state, right? Density is at an all-time low. Union density, um, union membership density is at an all-time low in the U.S. So over the past 50, 60 years, we've seen un union membership go down across the country. Um, I think that might be changing a little bit with increased uh, interest in labor issues. Um, and I hope that that sort of little flicker of hope just becomes a huge fire of uh, labor organizing um, that UCW can certainly be a part of.